Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, sorry for the lack of videos lately. I've been seeking a little bit of rest for myself and for working on different projects. I've been working hard on a tutorial where I'm going to show you how to paint different materials realistically. So that is going to come very soon in the next week. So I'm very excited for this. I worked a lot on this course. So this video that you are seeing here is me trying to recreate my most recent character design in 3D. So this was a big challenge because I've never done a, a 3D character before. So I decided to do it in Blender. It's not a very simple character design, but it was simple enough that I thought I could do it in Blender. And plus I don't know the other programs enough like ZBrush or any other modeling program to be well versed in that. I thought it would be just a big headache to try to do it in another program. So that's why I decided to do it in Blender. It was sometimes very very hard and frustrating to do so I had to figure out all the design aspects of the character as it was in 3D and I only had done a front view of the concept art so I had to figure out for example the side view of the helmet like you are seeing here. In the end I'm fairly happy with the result but I'm not satisfied with it because uh, I had to simplify a lot the design because I had a lot of lack of knowledge and I need to, to work on that to create some more complex characters later on because that, that's going to be the topic of this video is that I think that 3D is extremely important to learn for a concept artist. It's now a tool that's almost unavoidable because it's going to give you an edge that you cannot neglect. It's going to make you work much faster if you are creating environments in 3D. You don't have to think too much about perspective and you can really focus of, on the design of your environment. And I think it's a lot of fun to, to be able to travel in your own environment in a 3D program. And yeah, a lot of things have changed since the last video that I posted. I stopped working for the video game studio that I was working out and now I'm working on my own projects. I'm available for work if anyone that watches this video is a video game studio or, or a movie studio, feel free to, to contact me if you if you need any work. But yeah, for my previous job, I learned to design environments in Blender. I unfortunately cannot show yet the concept art that I did for the last preview two games that I worked on, but I'm really eager to, to show them to you once I I will be able to do that but I was able sometimes to to create environments design and whole new scenes in just one day of course it was depending on the complexity of the scene and the assets that I needed to create but it's a huge tool that gave me the opportunity to be much more productive and to make huge changes to a painting very quickly because painting an environment or a building or architecture in 2d is very hard to do you have to really be a master of perspective to grow very quickly and i'm not a master of perspective so i think it's a tool that's not negligible for any concept artist and so here i decided to also try to create a character design in 3d instead of just working on my environments because i was frustrated when i was creating environments to not be able to create characters that were growing with them and i felt limited but now i know that i can at least try to start uh, creating my own characters in 3d as well of course now the quality is not there but I hope that with practice and with time is going to be there. And this was inspired by the work of Pablo Dominguez that I see a lot of uh, on Instagram. He's creating his own characters. Of course, his are much more complex. He, I think he stores them in ZBrush, which I have yet to learn. And I think it is very cool that he can create his own character designs in 3D and then he can place them and reuse them in any scenes that he wants and create infinite paintings with one character that is tilted once. But I I believe that the problem with 3D is that your character is going to look a bit stiff. At least that's my own opinion. So I think that I'm still going to create my own characters in 3D, but very basic aspects of them so that I'm still after going to paint over it and maybe even change a bit the pose to make it more look more dynamic because with 3d it's much harder to manipulate and enhance a pose of a character it's just a lot of edits that in 2d you should just change with a few brushstrokes also with this character i had some problems with the skinning 
of the clothing i had to spend a lot of time changing that but it's not even perfect now so that's something that i'm going to have to work on but it's very cool to be able to put it in any pose i want with any lighting i want and see how it works then and so for this experimentation i decided to do a little rendering and then rework it on photoshop to have a finished dynamic illustration just a one-off without any environments but after that i'm going to be working on a bigger painting with an, an environment that i have yet to to create in blender and i'm excited to see what it's going to look like of course it's if it's a failure it's a failure but at least i will have learned but i think that 3D is really unavoidable for any concept artist right now. Not so much for illustrators. I think illustrators can still uh, get away with painting only in 2D because I know some illustrators that are extremely good in painting environments and characters without the help of any 3D. I see more and more illustrators still starting to use Blender and to each his own, of course. You make your own choices. If you don't like Blender or you don't like 3D, then you choose not to use it and that's good on you. You are going to have a visual aesthetic and visual signature to your work, which is very cool. And even with here, the, the character that I rendered, I saw a lot of problems in the materials it's always important to have the skills of painting manually because with 3d you are going to have the same aspects of details everywhere in your painting you are not going to have the some blurs soft edges and brush strokes that are going to contribute to the charm and the aesthetic of your paintings so i believe that it's very important to keep the skills of painting manually if you don't know how to paint or how to design something you are not going to necessarily create some great artwork and so here i'm spending a little bit of time reworking the rendering repainting over uh, a bit of everything adjusting the the lighting the colors the the problems in skinning adding some more complexities to the textures because maybe i should have done into substance painter as well to add some more complexities to the um, texture but i didn't do that and i chose to use some very simple texture that i would just rework into uh, in photoshop which is what i'm doing now and so yeah i hope everything's doing good for you guys and i will try to regain a good rhythm for the youtube videos i built a very good habit for a bit more than a month i think to post two videos a week but i fell off because i just my heart was not into it and i had a lot of things to think about but now i'm back into it and i will try to to keep this good habits to build a community with you guys and to share just my thoughts and my processes over the next uh, few years also, if you'd like to see the PSD file of this painting in more details and see each layer and what I've done with them, I made the PSD available for free on my Grimmel store, so the link will be in my description. You will also be able to then export a high resolution JPEG of this painting and do whatever you want with it except selling it. So every time that you paint in uh, Photoshop, don't hesitate to use the lasso tool. Uh, that's a thing that I used to not, never do. And since I started to use the lasso tool a lot more, my artworks are getting better. Because with that, you can really choose and decide where the hard edges are going to be. And it's much easier than to just try to paint everything by hand and not doing any selections. And here I'm starting to put in a few color variations to create an interesting background and then using a very textured brush to, to just create some noise and create something that looks kind of dynamic and interesting to the eye. But not too eye-catching either because I want to keep the focal points for the character because that's the main focus of the image. And then I'm going into the camera raw filter in Photoshop uh, where I'm going to tweak a little bit the contrast and the colors to just have a better final result. And that's it. That was a lot of fun and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.